welcome to a quick video showing you how to set up an OLED screen. Now these are fantastic little displays, uh, usually black and white, although some of them can be in colour. And uh, they come in a range of sizes, 0.96 inches to 1.3 inches. Um, you can buy them offline. So you can buy them online, um, eBay, um, Pimeroni, etc., Pie Hut, and you can also purchase them on Amazon. This one here is seven seventy nine. When I purchased it, it was only six pound fifty three, and I thought I was getting myself an absolute bargain. Um, if you look at it, it says it's designed for the Arduino and the Raspberry Pi, and includes an ebook with it. Um, so I was pretty stoked and thought, excellent, this is an absolute bargain. Uh, I can get this to work on my Raspberry Pi. It even gives me the uh, correct, well, what I assume is the correct schematic for wiring up the OLED board. Um, what I didn't read though was down here, it says that the controller is the SH or SSH1106. Now, this is not the standard driver for <laughs> the Arduino or CircuitPython library. So what you'll find is if you buy a cheaper model of the OLED screen or display, you'll probably get the SH1106 driver in it. Um, this cannot be used with the um, Arduino and the CircuitPython libraries. So after a while, uh, lots of frustration and about to throw it in the bin, um, I managed to get a link to a website, to a, um, a repository, which has the correct driver software so that you can actually use this board, this hardware. Um, so this video is basically about that, how to wire it up, how to install the correct modules and get your OLED cheap version running. So the first thing you're going to need to do is obviously buy one. Okay, um, wiring is as simple as this. Okay, so we've got the power going to the power one here, we've got the data line coming out here, we've got the clock line here, and then we've got one of these wires GND going into the ground pin. Um, now on mine, the, on the diagram here it says SCL, on the hardware that I purchased it actually says SCK. Um, after a bit of research it is the same. Okay, so it, it, it serves the same purpose. So if yours says SCK, just wire it up to this GPIO physical pin number three here. Right, so far so good. Now if you install the um, Arduino library you're going to end up with something like this. and. Uh, I was frustrated for a long time. I thought it was something to do with the display being broken, the the, the ribbon cable down here being broken. Uh, it's not. It's just that you're using the incorrect library. So if you buy an OLED screen, such as this one here, and it says it's for Raspberry Pi, as many of them normally do, uh, but it doesn't work and you end up with this, then do not panic because it is probably the driver that is different and as I said in a minute I'm going to show you how to how to sort that. Right let's get started then. So the first thing you're going to need to do is make sure that you have wired up your screen correctly um, and then we are going to head over to the Raspberry Pi, boot it up and the first thing that you need to do is to set the uh, correct I2C. So we're going to go down to Raspberry Pi configuration. It's very easy to do this. We're going to go to interfaces and we're going to turn I2C. We're going to enable that. Okay. This is a bus line that uh, the hardware, the screen uses to take the data and then display it on the screen. So we're going to click OK. It's probably best to restart now. So we'll go shut down, reboot, um, just to make sure that it's picked it up. Then what we're going to do is ensure that the, your OLED screen has been found. And to do this, let me just zoom in a bit for you. I'm going to use a really simple command somewhere in here. I'm 
Okay, so I to C detect minus Y one. I'm going to use this then to detect and see if the hardware has been found. Press enter. You can see here that 3C, it has found the OLED screen um, and, and picked it up. If yours doesn't work, first of all, check that um, you have enabled I2C in the preferences. Makes you go here. Um, also check that your wiring is correct. Go back to that uh, diagram. Check that the wiring is correct. So now we know that it's found the hardware, which is which is great. So what I can do now is to install the correct libraries. The libraries we're going to use then are on this website, link down in the description below. And as it says in the documents, it is designed to run OLED screen display drivers for all these different um, versions of the driver. Obviously, the one we're using is SH1106. Um, you may recognize this one. This is the common 1306 Adafruit library driver for uh, OLED screens. Okay, head down the left hand side, go to installation, and you're basically going to copy and paste. Or, all right, so I've copied this line here into your terminal, press enter. Okay, so in your terminal, you're going to copy and paste it in press enter and that will install it. Now, if you are using Python 3, which is what you should be using, because obviously Python 2 is, is fairly redundant now, ensure that after Python, you always put the number three. So here, Python 3 dev, install Python 3 pip. So every single instance of Python, ensure that you put the number three. Now it's going to say it's already been installed because I've already done it, um, but there we go. Go back, next one, copy and paste this one. Okay, make sure we're using Python 3, so uh, pip3. Back to the Raspberry Pi, paste it in the terminal. And we're going to ensure that we use pip3 because we're using Python 3 and install it. So this is the setup to um, install the correct driver software to run your screen. Already satisfied because I've already set up and um, we're sorted. Now you'll want to go to Python usage afterwards and we're going to use this simple code here. Uh, this displays um, the word hello world and it's going to fill on there. I'm going to copy that copy that into Python and we're going to run it then on our OLED screen to show that it's working. Take it then, copy back over to your Raspberry Pi, going to open Python 3, new file and it's going to paste it in. Okay, obviously then paste the second bit in and uh, you have your code. So I'm going to open mine earlier. Okay, so here we have Hello World. Don't want to save it. Okay. And then what we want to do is to obviously run it. And that will now display on the OLED screen, which I'm now going to uh, show you. Here's my Raspberry Pi then, and uh, here is my OLED screen, which is now displaying the words, hello world, um, running correctly. No issue at the top, no kind of pixelation. Um, it's working correctly. So the test, see what's going on. You can also change this. So just to show text, I'm going to add uh, Teco Ed instead. Fill it in white. Obviously, it's only a white screen. Let's make it. Um, well, that's position there, so we can change the position slightly. Let's go 50, 40. I'm going to run that, and um, we'll go back to um, the LED screen. This is the 
result. Tech OED, you can see it's moved over slightly. Uh, missing a bit of the T there. I might have done a lowercase T, but it's working and displaying correctly. One final change you might want to make is if you are intending to display images or uh, render videos on the OLED display, then you might want to change the setting, uh, which will increase the um, speed at which the data is written to display. And obviously, it makes it a bit more um, a, bit, a bit more streamlined and a bit more succinct, and gives a smoother quality to the to the animation. Um, so what we're going to do is going to go to sudo nano slash boot slash config dot text and scroll down until you find uh, the first one well the first one to do is uh, um, sorry the first change to make is here okay at the bottom we're going to add this dt parameter equals i2c underscore board rate equals one followed by and I always struggle one two three four five six zeros and this will actually speed up the um, rate at which the data can be written to the display uh, it's great for uh, using videos which I'll, I'll, I'll show you in a minute so add that click X control X um, that saves it and then, then we're sorted. So I'm going to show you a quick demonstration of how the change we just made in the config text um, file will actually improve the um, kind of the, the slickness or the the animation, the quality of the um, image on the on, on the OAD screen. Um, what it's actually doing is making it smoother. If you imagine a flick book, uh, imagine flicking it at the same speed constantly. And consistently, it would obviously improve the quality of the, the, the flick or the animation. So here's one. It's going to take um, a file, a famous clip from a film, which is stored here, and it's going to break it down into each frame from the video, and then it's going to display each of those frames in order onto the OLED display, and that will create um, a movie of it. So we're going to click Run. And it's going to get the camera ready on the other one so you can see this. So I'm going to click run, press OK, and it will load up. It will start uh, rendering, and you can see here it's working quite well. Obviously, if you recognize the film, just let me know. Looks a bit like the um, characters struggling or staggering. Uh, they're actually staggering. It's not the rendering of the video. It's a bit of flicker here, but uh, that's better. Uh, remember the screen is only 1.3 inches it's pulling there out it each goes. frame from the video clip writing it to the display so it's pretty good quality ready here he is who is it hello okay so that carries on playing um hope you found that helpful. I was uh, struggling to find a lot or, or any kind of content about uh, SH1106 drivers. Um, thanks to Jason and UK Scon who pointed me in the correct direction. And um, this library here, or um, set of set of codes um, for displaying on the drive is absolutely brilliant. It just means that I can now buy, or you can buy, cheaper versions um, and still get them working on your Raspberry Pi and your Arduino boards. Thanks very much for watching. Um, if you've got any questions or you want to share your projects and your builds with me, please feel free to. Um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.